I created a giant player in MLB The Show, and we're gonna see if he can make the major leagues. Daddy Longlegs is the tallest player in baseball at six foot ten, and he was fittingly drafted by the San Francisco Giants. In addition to being an absolute freak show, he has absolutely no range in the outfield, which may make our climb through the minor leagues a huge challenge. I had my doubts about our chances to climb the ladder in this organization, but flashed my opposite field power on my first career hit. My team was down two in the seventh, and I had a chance to come up clutch, but hit a missile right to first base as we lost my debut. I was looking to continue my success in game two and hit the ball hard, but didn't reach base in another loss. Zero hit performances were unacceptable, especially in double A, and I was looking to bounce back in game three with two singles. Then with a man on first, I hit a hard line drive to first base, but this time cleared the infield as I picked up the first extra base hit of my career and helped my team get the win. Being a giant meant that my strike zone was way bigger than normal, but the power in my bat more than made up for it as I was a huge problem for double A pitchers. My abysmal speed was my biggest weakness, but despite this, I managed to use my long legs to beat out a throw. I continued to hit to all fields against Harrisburg, as this right field double and a bases loaded RBI single helped my team get the win. I was surprised that I hadn't hit my first dinger yet, and I don't know what this pitcher was thinking on this changeup down the middle, as this missile went off the fence and I was racking up doubles. We were looking for a series win, but I had some bad luck on this double play. I was able to redeem myself, but it wasn't enough as Harrisburg already had a big lead and our offense just wasn't producing. I wanted to make the most of this game, however, as I had a two-double outing and scored our only run. I was leading our league in batting average while also starting to get better in the field. I fell into a slump over my next few games, but broke out of it in the best possible way, digging out this sinker, and I took the time to watch this ball fly deep over the fence. It was my first career home run, and it couldn't have come at a better time as my skills were quickly improving and opposing pitchers still hadn't learned to not throw me high-breaking balls. We were facing off against the Seawolves, and this rocket to the wall in a very ugly head first slide helped us get aboard. Then I showed off my long legs on this hit and run, which actually worked as I could round third and score a run. We rallied back to tie the game, and I turned on another breaking ball for my second hit in two innings. Richmond led 6-3 to three in the fifth, but I wasn't done doing damage, getting aboard with a single, and to everyone's surprise, I decided to take off for second, stealing the first base of my entire career. However, that wasn't the end of my brilliance, as the opposite field, no doubter, cemented this game as the best of my whole career. I was surging to start the year, hitting over 410 games with two home runs and a 1.1 OPS, there was no question that I would be promoted if I improved in the field and continued mashing. My stat line could have been even more impressive if I didn't have to worry about these walls as I was definitely robbed of a few more home runs. I realized the best way to hit more dingers was to clear the center field fence and that was exactly what I did with two aboard against the Seawolves. I stayed on fire with three more hits and began wondering when I'd get the call up to AAA. We were looking to sweep the Seawolves and I started out with what I thought was another double, but the ball kept carrying over the fence for a two-run jack. However, we weren't done after my fourth homer on the year as I gapped a double to score my teammate all the way from first to help us complete the sweep. At only 18 years old, I had quickly become one of baseball's top prospects, and the ability to hit for power to all fields while also looking like a 50-year-old man was really unique. However, I had one of the most embarrassing moments of the entire season as I brutally missed this play in the field, crashed into the wall, and gave up an inside-the-park home run. That fittingly ended up being the worst game of my whole career as I went 0 for 5. I was feeling defeated, but forgot about it real quick as this pitcher gave me an absolute gift and I hit yet another dinger. I then made up for my poor play in the field, charging on this ninth inning blooper to help us get the win. Richmond was looking for another series victory and I drove a first inning run with this double to the gap and right and we were on fire again. More experience helped us improve our stats and I kept hitting more and more doubles as the season continued. Even more impressively though, I stole another base. Down 4-3 in this game, I had the chance to be the hero, and I came through with another rocket into the right center gap to score my teammate all the way from first to help us come from behind. I could earn power and clutch upgrades if I advanced a runner, and I was determined to do exactly that as I went oppo with this outside pitch, scoring the runner all the way from first to improve my skills. I was up to 63 overall a month into the season and was on my way to getting a huge skill set upgrade. This was no surprise as I led Richmond in nearly every offensive category and led the entire league in hits. We were taking on the Seawolves again, and I I was looking to get out of double A as I dug out this low fastball and broke the 0-0 tie. It was 2-2 in the ninth, and I was intentionally walked for the first time in my career, but we still pulled out the win. Our offense was on fire in our next game, and I wanted to keep the rally going as I got a great pitch to hit, driven back to the wall, and gone for a grand slam. That opposite field salami was the best play of my whole career and would be a great conclusion to my time in double A as I finally got promoted. I opened some packs to get some new gear, and I was ready for my 
AAA debut, already getting my first hit against the Dodgers. I needed to be a decent fielder to get to the majors, and I was thankfully improving. Just like at AA, these pitchers were leaving way too many pitches up in the zone, and I turned this meatball into my first double. We were getting blown out by the Dodgers, but it didn't stop me from showing out, and I had my second double in two games. I carried my hot start at the plate into my next at-bat, mashing another double to secure another two-hit performance. Daddy Longlegs had become a doubles machine, and the Dodgers were giving me a chance to prove it as I pulled this one the other way, where it one-hopped into the seats. I secured a three-hit game in the eighth inning and was off to a hot start with Sacramento. From there, it didn't take long to unlock a new skill set as our giant was up to 69 overall. I had also become much better at drawing walks, and this was good because we still didn't have our first home run at AAA. However, I wasn't too worried about this and continued smashing baseballs and driving in my teammates. I was three for four at the plate against Albuquerque, and I finished this game off with a no-doubt blast to left field. I finally had my first home run at Sacramento. There was a chance I could be in the majors before the end of my first season, especially if I kept hitting bombs, back-to-back -back games with the home run, and this one went the other way. I was getting through the minors faster than Wander Franco and hit my third home run of the season in our next series. We were trailing one to nothing, looking for a series sweep, and I delivered my first hit of the game, lifting this double into the gap. It was tied up in the seventh, and I wanted to break this one open and had home runs in two straight games. I clearly didn't belong in the minors, and San Francisco was willing to pull the trigger to call me up in August. I accidentally simmed my MLB debut, but fittingly hit a home run in my first ever at-bat. I was finally a major league player, and I was looking to pick up right where I left off, hitting the ball hard down the line for a base hit. However, I was up against Shohei Otani, and he welcomed me to the league very quickly as I went hitless. My batting average was the lowest it had ever been, and it was costing our team games early on in my call-up. I was worried that I had fallen into another slump at the wrong time, but thankfully, my seventh inning single helped us get a win against Texas. I was hitless with runners in scoring position, but wanted to change that with this sharp grounder through the infield. I felt I was regaining my confidence, so this was the perfect time to strike, driving this eighth inning pitch deep and out of the park to get us on board and steal this game from the Rangers. I was fighting to prove myself to the Giants, and my stats were already looking much better. It was much tougher to hit for extra bases at the MLB level, but I still managed to get on base with some singles in our next series against the Rays. However, this ended up being the sign of a huge slump as I went hitless over four games and was stranding my teammates on base. With my team making a playoff push, this was the worst time to be struggling, and my batting average was approaching 200. But thankfully, sometimes it only takes one swing, and this deep drive to center field would keep me at the majors for at least a bit longer. Truly great timing for my first home run since my debut. I was excited, but I had to remember that this was the MLB, and there was no way I was going to be stealing any more bases, so I decided to stay in my lane and kept driving opposite field doubles off the wall to score. My stats still weren't great, but I felt I did enough to avoid getting sent back to AAA. I wanted to finish the year strong and help my team make the playoffs, but I still couldn't produce with runners in scoring position. However, because I hit for so much power, I was able to find success scoring my teammates all the way from first base. I helped my team out down two against Cleveland, driving a high pitch down the line to collect an RBI. We managed to tie the game, and I wanted to walk it off, but my teammate had to pump the brakes at third, and we lost in extras. I was on fire and really wanted to solidify my spot on the team next season. With two men on, I finally came through with runners in scoring position on this garbage time double. Nearing the end of the season, I was looking for a few more home runs, and this one was looking great, but landed just outside the foul pole. That was disappointing, but only motivated me in our finale against the Rockies, as I tested the speed of their outfield on this very long double. But that wasn't enough for me. I wanted my revenge on the foul pole, leaving absolutely no doubt about this one. That was moonshot number seven. I'd like to get to 10 home runs and a 280 average before the end of the year, and I was feeling confident I could do it. My team was now only five back from a wild card spot, and my performance was a huge reason for that. Up two in the eighth, I wanted to call game and gave the fans a souvenir on my eighth bomb of the year in what was one of the best games of my whole career. My average was quickly approaching 270, and I had broken out as one of our best players. I was a bit intimidated by a boss challenge against the Dodgers, but managed to complete it with this walk and extended my hitting streak to 10 games on my next at bat with this beautiful two out double. I had never seen two boss challenges in one game, but the Dodgers pulled a fast one on us, and I was thankfully able to complete it yet again. Leading 5 4 in the ninth, I gave our lead a cushion with a two run blast and helped us beat the division leader. It was the last game of the year, and I was looking to close out the season in style, launching a double over the right fielder's head. And then one more blast, watching this one go 461 feet for the perfect possible ending to a season where I hit 10 bombs and put together a really good slash line. We didn't make the playoffs, but my giant player made the major 
Rangers in just one year, putting together an awesome season.